Well, Megan, I've been wearing Vionic shoes for over three years now, but this month, my trusted shoe brand and I entered a new phase of our relationship, international travel. Well, Sarah, that is a serious commitment, (laughs) right? You can't just pack any shoe for a trip abroad. It's got to be stylish enough for those major cosmopolitan cities. It's got to be sturdy enough for trains, planes, buses, and city streets. And obviously, it's got to be comfortable enough to support your feet over many, many miles of walking. Well, no surprise, my Vionics were up to the task. I had two pair with me, a pair of casual sneakers in a cool gray color, and then a weatherproof suede ankle boot that I swear still looks brand new after 10 days on soggy sidewalks. Megan, the only time my feet hurt the entire trip was New Year's Eve when I made the mistake of wearing a pair of booties not from Vionic. So I'll just leave that data right here for you. Okay, well, that's pretty conclusive, Sarah. Vionic has the best curated styles to get you ready for whatever 2024 has in store, whether it's jet setting like Sarah or keeping up with busy mom life on this side of the pond. They even offer a 30 day guarantee, wear them, love them or return them for a full refund within 30 days. And we've got a great deal for you. Use code the mom hour 15 at checkout for 15% off your entire order at vionicshoes.com when you log into your account. That's a one time use only. Bionic Shoes, wearable well-being for your feet. Hi, I'm Sarah. And I'm Megan. We're two moms with eight kids between us, from little to grown. We're in different areas of the country and in different stages of life. But we both know that motherhood's a lot easier when real moms share tips and encouragement. And remind you that it's really all going to be okay. We're not experts. We're parents who've been there. We're not perfect. We're real. Welcome to the Mom Hour. Hi, everyone, and welcome to episode 293 of the Mom Hour. I am Megan Francis, here as always with Sarah Powers. Hi, Sarah. Hi. Do you know what day it is, Megan? I have no idea. What day is it? That's okay, because this is the week where no one knows what day it is. I love that about this particular week of the year. (laughs) Well, we know that by the time you're listening to this, Christmas is over and 2020 is almost over because this will be coming out, what, like the, the week after Christmas, correct? The 29th. Today is the 29th, if you're listening to this. Yes. Okay. So Christmas is over and done. Um, And if you've been listening for the last few weeks, you know that we have been kind of doing this like fun little ghost of Christmas past, Christmas present, and then not so much Christmas future. That's not the way we're doing it, but just life in future. We're going to future cast a little bit and look forward. Um, I did, you know, imitate the ghosts of Christmas past and present in the last couple episodes. But I don't think the ghost of Christmas future talks in the movie or the book. I think he just points and looks super scary. I don't remember at all. Okay. I think it's like, um, it's basically a specter or like a death, like a grim reaper. And he just points and it shows Scrooge all the ways that he's messed up his life. And then, you know, I don't even really think I know anybody named Tim or tiny Tim. So (laughs) we're not going to go down that road this week. We're going to stray from the framework just a little bit. It was really just a way to help us plan some episodes and get to talk about the, you know, past, present, and future. Um, but we are going to talk a little bit today about really in a year from now, what are we hoping? Like this has been such a weird year. And Sarah, we were talking before we started recording about how in some ways it's felt kind of like a lost year. Like mm-hmm. I moved into the house with my kids that we currently live in almost a year ago. We moved there January 19th, twenty. 20. Mm -hmm. And then basically two months by two months later, fewer, you know, less than two months later, life had changed as we know it completely. And then I feel like ever since, so the fat, the past nine plus months, we've been just kind of like waiting, Mm -hmm. you know, waiting for things to change, waiting for things to go back to normal. It's like, we're in like a weird, um, hiatus mode or like, I don't know, purgatory, like survival yeah. too. Yes. Yeah. And so my kids, I mean, they are a full year older, almost they're great. They've gone through, you know, most of one grade and most of another in that year. But like, I don't feel like it got really recognized. There wasn't that like those milestones weren't marked mm-hmm. the same way they usually would be. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. So I think what would be fun to do is just to look forward a year and then see how many other things will have changed. So let's just, you know, kind of go through again, like the kids, our kids in our our homes or beyond our homes now. Mm 
uh, ages, what grades they'll be in. And then if there's any big life changes that we might be on the cusp of then, or if they will, and I'll go first. Um, so by a year from now, I will have a high school senior who is going into his last semester. So Will will be wrapping up the first semester of his senior year. Um, he is definitely college bound. So things are really going to be getting close to looking very different around here within a year. So like we are going to be looking at dropping a kid, hopefully by then at least one other adult member of my family <laughs> um, will have launched a little more solidly into life. And I could really be down to two kids in the house almost like, like kind of gone that cusp yeah. and um, that they would be 12. Clara will be 12 and in seventh grade, Owen will be 16 and in 10th grade, the older two will be 22 and 24. Only one of my kids by that point won't be driving Wow. or at least, you know, have a permit. Um, and our lease will be almost up in this house and likely we will not renew. I don't see mm-hmm. us renewing this house. There's really no reason that this was really meant to be a temporary big house while we had big house needs. Mm-hmm. And my guess is we will maybe already have moved, but if not, we'll be looking pretty seriously at where our next place is going to be. Um, so that's a lot of change that's going to happen in a year, especially coming off a year where nothing feels like it really happened at all. Right. Yeah. That's so interesting. Um, okay. So for me, my kids a year from now will be eight turning nine. So almost nine and then 11 and 13. Um, the grades will be third, sixth and eighth next year. So they will be midway through those years. Um, one thing that's interesting is we will have a school decision to make for our sixth grader, a decision that'll be made sometime in the spring for the fall start, if that makes sense. So it's, it's a choice between two good options. Our elementary school does go through sixth grade, or there's an option to, um, go to the middle school where Allegra goes. So that's kind of interesting. Um, I know I've moved schools a lot in the last few years, but this one feels like, um, one of the choices where it really could be good either way, but it's kind of a hard decision. Um, whereas my other school moves have been very much like, this is what I want. This is by choice. So, and not like, not like a choice between two potentially both, like they both have pros and potential cons, I guess. So, um, so one of my kids will be at a school that I, at this, as of this recording, don't know which reality that will be. Um, either way, two of the three kids will be in the same school and the other at the other. Um, and I hope for no big moves cause we made our big move in 2020. So I very much hope to still be, I believe we will still be in this house. I want to be in this house for a very long time. Um, and yeah, I'm just hopeful for, I guess, less upheaval, um, and more, more rootedness in the community that we chose to join in 2020. So, yeah. I think that that makes sense for us each personally, because I think likely that is what's going to happen to you. You seem like you're, you've already, like you said, you've already made that big shift and like, yeah, I made a big shift and I kind of knew I was setting myself up for another shift that would be like a down shift a little bit, you know? So like, those are, those were kind of even like mine was already expected before COVID and you used COVID as like one of the factors that kind of incentivized you or was a catalyst for your Mm -hmm. move. What I think is really interesting is that, you know, we are on the cusp of there being um, well, people are getting vaccinated as of today. Like my, as of the day that we're recording this, my sister-in-law's sister, who's a, a nurse is getting a COVID vaccine, right? Probably wow. right at this moment, it's going into her arm right now. So things are really going to change a lot in the next year and hopefully get much more back to some kind of normal, but the next few months are going to be rough and mm-hmm. rocky. We know that like mm-hmm. January, February, March, they're just saying, um, not just health wise, but economically, like there's going to be a lot happening. And I wonder for the people listening right now, how many more people are going to like maybe delayed those big changes, but are going to embrace them this year. Like how many people listening to this right now are considering a big move or a career change or something like that. And we won't even see like the results of that. Like in a year, we hope things are going to be a lot like more back to normal, but between now and then there's going to be even more shaking up. Right. And that's crazy to think about. It is crazy to think about. And the other thing is like in the beginning of the pandemic, it was like, well, maybe we should wait till things settle and then do this thing. And then I think mid pandemic, people started to realize, no, I'm just going to do my life. And and that might be like trying for another baby or making a move or quitting your job. And so then mid pandemic, I feel like people did get get up the gumption to start 
doing things because they realized we were in this for the long haul. What's interesting now right. is as we potentially could see an end in sight, even if that's a long line of sight, I wonder if people like you said will go back to this mentality of I'm going to hold off because things are going to change again. It's just the psychology of this is so interesting. The future, the like the the challenge of future casting in a time like this, I think is so interesting. Yeah. And and even things like if you did live in a place where school isn't a done deal for, for me, my, my initial, you know, pretend COVID in my family was when I got pregnant with my fifth and we were living in a city and I was like, nope, like I can't, like I was living in Chicago. The public school system was very difficult for me to even think about navigating with that many kids and getting them all because there's so much, um, schools of choice kind of stuff going on and like merit based Mm -hmm. schooling and stuff like that. And like, it was so overwhelming that we moved to a small town where as long as I live someplace in the school district, like within the city limits, my kids go to the school, end of story. I don't have to think anything beyond that. And there's a lot of people for whom that's never the case. And so some people are making these decisions yearly anyway. Mm -hmm. And like how much might your preschool decision or your kindergarten Mm -hmm. decision change based on all of this uncertainty, the economics of it and um, how they handle COVID and how you feel about that. And just, I mean, everything. So that's a, that's a big thing, but also to your point, Sarah, you know, back in March of last year or this year, sorry, it still has only been less than a year. It feels like it was about five years ago in March, 2020, we were all waiting for things to get back to normal. And now I don't feel like any of us are waiting for things to get back to normal. We're waiting to know what normal is going to look like. Mm -hmm. And that's a very different thing. Like we're, mm-hmm. we're like waiting on a very different reality than we thought we were. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Sarah, you know, when someone's trying to sell me something, I can be pretty skeptical. Maybe it's my rebel tendencies, but having some healthy doubts has definitely kept me from wasting money on every cool product. The algorithm sends my way. You know, what's not too good to be true though. Our sponsor ritual and their clinically backed essential for women, 18 plus multivitamin. Yeah, Megan, that's so true. We both love these vitamins because they're made with high quality and traceable key ingredients in clean bioavailable forms. And they're gentle on an empty stomach with a fresh minty essence in every bottle. So you don't have to worry about nausea if you're a bit relaxed about when you take them. I'm also a big fan of Ritual's sustainability standards. They use scientific tools to select lower carbon packaging, prioritize sustainably sourced ingredients and set ambitious climate goals. No more shady business. Ritual's Essential for Women 18 Plus is a multivitamin you can actually trust. Get 20% off your first month for a limited time at ritual.com slash the mom hour. Start Ritual or add Essential for Women 18 Plus to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash the mom hour for 20% off. We are welcoming a new sponsor today, Dr. Mom Butt Balm. Sarah, this might sound a little weird, but when my kids were babies, I actually really enjoyed changing diapers. It felt like a little time out to connect. Oh, yeah, Megan. I can totally remember that feeling of just kind of leaning in and enjoying a little moment in your routine. Yeah, but when my babies had diaper rash, it made the whole experience so much less fun for both of us. And back in those days, we didn't have great options for rash cream either. It was usually goopy, heavy, and full of dyes and preservatives and other things I didn't really want to put on my baby's butt. Well, the creator of Dr. Mom Butt Balm, who is a mom and also a doctor, had the same experience, Megan, and she did something about it. Dr. Mom Butt Balm is free of dyes, preservatives, and zinc oxide. It's easy to apply, easy to remove, and you don't have to use a lot to protect your baby's skin. I really love the way this balm feels. It's almost like a high-end skin cream. Very nice, no strong scent, and definitely nothing like the diaper rash creams I used to struggle with. Don't let diaper rash come between you and your baby. Shop for Dr. Mom Butt Balm online at Amazon or Walmart today. Okay, Sarah. So I am before we leap into this, you know, this little conversation as part of the episode today, um, I think that there is so much in this that could be, I don't know, perceived as like depressing or sad or like, wow, look at all we've lost. But I think it's interesting that you and I, as we were planning this episode, decided to kind of categorize all the things that have changed so dramatically in the last 10 months and that we hope will be different in some way by next year. And we had to like remind each other of all the things. And I think what that speaks to is like really how adaptable we are. Like when we feel like there's a good reason, and I actually think this is very hopeful, like 
humans can really adapt very, mm-hmm. very quickly. And our kids can adapt even more quickly because they're even less accustomed to how things are or should be. I'm putting that in air quotes than we are. So I just think that's interesting. Like we kept going, oh yeah, and what about this? And oh yeah, what about that? But the truth is things like um, live performances and, you know, in real life gatherings and going to restaurants and bars, things like that have been, we've joked about how every time our states come out with a new wave of, um, of restrictions, we're both like, oh, weren't we already doing that anyway? Right. Right. Yeah. It's almost like you, you adjust to, and I can't speak for everyone, but we have adjusted to such a pared down life experience that even adding in things incrementally or nowhere close to what it was before, but a little bit less restrictive feels like a bounty, I guess. So it's all yeah. relative. And, um, you know, I've shared that my kids get to go to school in person every day, pretty much full time. They, they have shortened days, but pretty much full time. That felt like amazing after all of the online schooling. And yet it's still not as much school or as or as rich a school experience as they would have been having, but it's all relative, right? So hopefully yeah. as we talk about our hopes for adding things back in, I think everybody j- can just remember, you know, it won't feel as good as full normal, but man, it'll feel good. If you can go, if you right. can gather with six friends when you've had none, it'll feel right. really good, you know? Well, that and and also um, it won't, it won't feel as good. Well, it won't be as much, but I would argue that it will feel even better. It's like, uh, I'm just going to use a childbirth analogy. Okay. It's like what, if you're having a baby um, and you're, you know, if, you, if you're doing it without an epidural, because then you're, you know, you can't feel it as much, but you get like this rush of dopamine when everything sucks okay. like, during the really hardest part. And then after like you do all that hard work, there's like literally euphoria. Now, if you suddenly were like just sitting there like a normal human and then someone just came and slapped a postpartum body on you, that would not feel good. Right. <laughs> that would be right. a very hard adjustment. But when you're going from like being in transitional labor yeah. to like what comes after, it feels amazing. Right. So it's kind of like that, that adjustment. And I mean, we could come up with, um, you know, yeah. we could come up with analogies all day that would be relevant to all of us. But like, we all have that experience of going from something that's really painful to something that's slightly less painful yes. and how good that feels. Euphoria is a good yes. word. The other one I'm just thinking of is sleep deprivation. If you've been yes. sleeping in 45 minute stretches for two months, say, and your baby gives you a four hour stretch, you, I mean, world watch out. You can take, you can do so much, but if I got four hours of sleep last night, Megan, I would be a yeah. basket case. Cause I, <laughs> I don't do that anymore. So it's a fitness right, level exactly. thing. It's a, Yep. Yeah. So I, yeah, I love expectations. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just like if we were still trying to run our business in 10 minute increments all day, yeah. like we did when yeah. our kids were like, you know, babies and two years old, we'd be like, who, who can do this? But when we were doing it, we did it. And yeah. it felt great to have the 10 minutes. Yeah. So anyway, those are all good analogies for what's happening, which is, um, that we're going to get back to something mm-hmm. and whatever it is, it's going to feel so good compared to like what we've given up that I think this list that we're about to just name off really quickly um, it almost feels like we've almost forgotten how big the list uh-huh. is. So yeah. let's just quickly name them off. And I can just do this unless you want to, yeah, no, go for Sarah. it. But, um, in real life gatherings, and by that, I mean, both things like family, you know, family gatherings and, um, also just like getting together with friends. I mean, I, I did, I was able to do some of that over the summer because there was our caseload was so small and the, the opportunities for outdoor get togethers were so abundant over the summer, but like, that's really just totally shriveled up again. And even when we were doing it over the summer, it was nothing like it used to be. Um, restaurants and bars being open again, were a big part of that in real life gathering experience. And those will be closed for a while here. And I don't see people utilizing them. Like one thing I was thinking about the other day is even though, even when they opened back up, like I kept seeing servers at the wrong places. So I'd go someplace and see a server that I was used to seeing at a completely different place. Oh, how funny. And I'd be like, oh, where you work here? And they're like, yeah, I had to leave that other place because they couldn't give me hours or whatever. And I thought, wow, it's like it's like shaking up a snow globe or something. Mm. You take all the pieces of your life that seem or like flipping over a board game that's being played out, like all the pieces of your life that you expect to play out a certain way and the people that you see in certain places all got shook up. And that's probably actually not going to go back to the way it was. Um, school. Like you were saying, um, Jenna was just saying yesterday 
that when we go back in real life, they're thinking that's going to happen, you know, sometime in January, we're probably going to go hybrid. So that's going to be like, you know, two mornings a week for each of my kids. Mm -hmm. A year ago, I would have been like, are you kidding me? And now I'm like, wow, (laughs) that sounds so amazing. So school has been a huge change. Uh, Workplaces. Um, I know you said Brian is mostly almost 100% home, right? Yeah. And I could, oh my gosh, can I just put out, can I manifest something for 2021? I live in a house that's half again as big as my last house. It's a, it's a large house and we have a separate office, but I, I'm just going to say, honestly, it's been really hard to have two adults working from home. It's hard on him. Yeah, I, I want it. him. I want him to go to an office and it's not his fault. It's my fault, honestly. So, um, yes, I, I feel like he safely could, but also we moved and he changed jobs right. within the same company. So I have no idea what it would even look like. I I know where the office is. It's 10 minutes away. And I think he'd have his own little office, but please, I would like to manifest him leaving this house in 2021. <laughs> so mean in the last well, episode, you- I sang his praises. You do well, yeah, and you can do both because it's really not. I mean, listen, you are used to being the mistress of your home domain. Ah, thank you. That is exactly it. And when you have another adult in that space, it is disruptive. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yes. So I am not going to complain about you saying that at all. I think that is super reasonable. And for me, like, really, um, what this has done is very much limited. I love working at home. I've I've always done it. I always gravitate back toward it, and I've often in my life had other places I would go work. Like I'd rent office space for a while or go to a co-working space, but I would always still gravitate toward, toward home. But I always knew the coffee shop was there for me mm-hmm. or like the co-working space was a possibility or even going to other people's houses to work. I remember I, like I have other um, creative type friends and I would go like, you know, just hang out at their house and we'd just be on our laptops working. And now none of that's happening. Yeah. So that is like, I'm kind of now limited to where, where I can carve out the most works, like the best workspace right now in my home. And gosh, I'm so grateful that I am in this house that has, I have like my own little office and a nice big bright bedroom and a dining room table and a kitchen, you know, and a kitchen Island. And I have lots of different options because I have realized for myself, I need to move around during the day Mm -hmm. when I work. If I am in one place, like I can't switch mental modes the way I need to. Um, I'm very, very grateful for that. But at the same time, it would be nice to be able to just pack it up and go someplace else to work. And that's not happening. Um, Let's talk about travel. Yeah, I mean. Travel. Yeah. (sighs) Will it? So travel is one of those things I don't do every single year. Well, that's not true. I have done it almost every single year, a lot for work for the last, gosh, 10 plus years. But there have been years when I just didn't travel as much for one reason or another. So I don't feel the immediate loss of travel quite as quickly. It's like later I go, gosh, I didn't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. I I traveled a lot in the years leading up to COVID and particularly a lot in like the six months leading up to COVID. And it, it does, I'm a homebody and I love being at home. But, um, first of all, my husband's entire family is on the East coast and or Chicago. So there's like an entire faction of family that we haven't been able to see. And then I've really missed the work travel. I've really, yeah. really missed our getting together in person with you. Like that was like a biggest pain point when the one year mark was approaching. Cause we usually see each other about three or four times a year. It used to be right. more like two, but the last few years it's been three or four times a year that we see each other in person. And, um, when November, mid November approached and that I knew that was the one year mark, I was just like mad about it, especially yeah. because in mid November, I knew it wasn't like around the corner. It was going to be another right. six months or whatever, like whatever it's going to be. So yeah, I miss travel and I, and I'm not even like yeah. a wanderlust personality, but I, I, it's a big part of our family's culture and uh, we were getting to a point where the kids were getting such to be such good travelers. So yeah, that's a hard one. Yeah. And we had trips that actually got canceled. But the funny thing is like for me, the first three, four, five months, I really didn't notice it because it's not that uncommon for me to go sure. three, four, five months without going anywhere. It's like now looking back and going, oh my goodness, like I didn't go anywhere. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, and we were talking about it with our accountant, our tax accountant, and like just talking about, you know, business travel. And then you and I both for 2020 were like, well, I mean, Saved us a that bunch of money. Didn't we didn't really have a huge line right, item exactly. in our business budget. And then we spent right. none. Right. Right. <sighs> and then, and then to think about when, when we would again. And, yeah. um, I was talking to Isaac the other day and he really wants to 
move out of, he wants to go abroad. He wants to live in like, I don't know, he's, he's fixated on uh, Poland for lots of reasons right now, but, and he's just like, I kind of forgot he can't do that. And I was like, well, why don't you just do it, honey? You know, like be me being like free spirit. And I'm like, just pack your bags and go. And he's like, mom, I can't, they won't take me. <laughs> like, I can't do that right now. And I thought, oh, right. Right. So even for like the way it's, it, especially if you were 21, how frustrating that mm-hmm. would be because life is happening right now and you don't feel like you have time the way you and I know we have time. Mm-hmm. Um, I just think about how frustrating that kind of stuff is for kids. And it's, that's really hard. And I do hope, I am hopeful because there are people who've been traveling all along and I'm assuming they have found ways to do it fairly safely, especially mm-hmm. since airports are basically empty right now. You know what I really miss, Sarah? I miss sitting in an airport with you I know. and like us having like a, a meal while we're waiting for our flights, taking us to different sides of the country mm-hmm. and like having our, like doing our drink working. So yeah. like, I or, like to have a drink and work in the airport. Or hungover <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> yes. And just like that, I love being in airports. Everyone's going someplace and it's so busy and it feels so bustling and hopeful to me. And like, just not having had that experience now in so long. Yeah. I do yeah. feel like my world has shrunk down a lot. Yeah. So, ah, all right, moving on next category, extracurriculars, sports clubs for the kids, all the stuff that makes them get out of our house. Oh my gosh. And do something other than be in our house. Yeah, this is a big one for us because of our move and our move was COVID prompted and it's a for sure a net win for our family. But um, what it did was obviously it wiped the slate clean in terms of extracurriculars for my kids because we moved. And so even when things were starting to open back up or there maybe were outdoor options, you know, for like, say, martial arts class or some kind of sport to be outside and masked. We didn't have anything to go back to and and starting new has felt a little overwhelming. So I, I mean, it's low on the list I'm stressing out about right now, but it is an area that like, I just feel like is part of, it's part of the stage yeah. of life I'm in, right? Your kids sign yeah. up for a class or they try tennis or they go to a camp over spring break or they, there's like all these things that my kids have done none of. And it's going to be interesting to see because now we live in a new place. So everything's going to be new. And I do have some kind of apprehension about that because my kids aren't five anymore. So they're going to be, you know, forging new friendships, starting new clubs and activities. And I'm I'm eager for that as soon as it can safely be done, because it's a it's a big part of life at these ages. And our move made it particularly like non-existent, even in the months where like some of that was possible, but we just didn't have anything to do. Yeah. And, you know, for, for older kids, for younger kids, like little, little ones, those extracurriculars are often all about mom's sanity and like yeah. giving them something to do, getting everyone out of the house, like burning off energy. Then at your age, it really does become like, how do you keep them active and happy and engaged and like, get the grumpies out and all those things. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then at my kids ages, it's more like stuff that they choose for themselves that when they're not doing anything, it's quite depressing. Yeah. Like I just really look at like Owen's life right now, for example, him being 15 and thinking about my life at 15. And if I contrast the two, it's quite depressing. Like Mm -hmm. I really can't go. William has really managed to carve out lots of life for himself, even around this stuff. And Owen's just not really motivated in that way. But I think he underestimates how, how hard it is on him to just mm-hmm. be in the house all the time. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't really seek out ways to go out and safely see people because kind of he could take or leave people most of the yeah. time until he doesn't have them. And yeah. then it's like, oh, wait, like all these people I used to be able to do stuff with, like they lost touch because he just didn't try. And I think for him, activities, that was like the way to do it. Yeah. And now that's not there anymore. And that's, that's rough. Well, um, and remembering hope. too, that like, there's a lot of social skills that happen in the early teen years that yep. like, they haven't gotten a chance to practice. Allegra has a new friend at school, like a, like a real friend she made herself and it's very sweet. And I said, why don't you see what she's doing over the break? And we could go to the beach with masks on or go for a hike or something safe. And, and like I said, like really honestly, she's like, I, I don't really know how to make plans with someone. And I was like, oh my gosh, you don't. And you know, COVID or no COVID, they have to learn those things. But man, has it put a, like a a pause button on a lot of developmental social skills. And I could see that with Owen too. Like if he's happy enough at home, like the logistical pieces to move around to actually make plans are something that you learn at 12, 13, 14, 15, you know, it's not something that's like natural. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Okay. Uh, Another one that I have on the list that 
I don't want to confuse with in real life gatherings because to me, gatherings is like, um, you have all your relatives over for the holiday or like you go and do something out. Right. But just casual get togethers. Like mm. that was such a big thing for me, like calling up a friend and saying, Hey, um, you know, do you have time for lunch or like, let's go grab it's, it's four o'clock. I'm wrapping up my work day. Do you have time to go grab a drink? And right now, like not only are those things not happening because there's no place to go and people aren't supposed to be gathering in that way, but also just like that idea that you'll just pick up your phone and casually text someone to mm-hmm. do something. Mm-hmm. I feel like has completely gone by the wayside. Yes. Things don't feel impromptu anymore. Like, and I agree. Yeah. <laughs> so I think some of that is we're losing the skill of that. I think like so too. we're all getting in our routines and like losing the ability to just impromptu be out of the, in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, even going to the store kind of exhausts me now mm-hmm. in a way that it didn't used to, but like, yeah, it's just something about that. Like, I'm not even really that good of friends with this person, but I feel like seeing them, let's just make it happen has really fallen by the wayside. And, and that'll be hard to get back. I, I think, think so too. even when things open back up. So, um, it's almost like, these we, all were, like we were burned by how complicated and fraught and even a little yes. shameful those interactions felt in the early days. And now, even if we can do them safely, it's like, we're, it's almost like, you know how we've talked about on the podcast when, when having little kids and going out is such a hassle for so long, you have to retrain your brain when your kids are older and they can put on their own coats and shoes to be like, Oh wait, this is not such a hassle. Like this is easier now, but you have the, you have the self-preservation like knee jerk reaction that kicks in. That's like, that's not worth it. It's not going to be fun. And that's kind of, I think the yep. casual, the spontaneous social gathering, we will have to really retrain ourselves to know that it's possible whenever we, whenever it is possible. So, yeah. Uh, um, so the last one that's on this list, and I bet you we've forgotten three or four more categories, but that's okay. Um, is live performances. Oh. And, you know, just like travel, I don't go see like live shows so often that I, I didn't notice the absence for the first three or four months, which you might think is weird for me. Cause I, I do go see like live music a lot, but that kind of happens casually. Like it's because I'm already out with my friends and there happens to be live music or I'm in a show and I knew I wasn't going to be doing any plays this year anyway. So stuff like that, like those are usually the frameworks around why those things happen. But for me, like going to see like live theater might only happen two, three times a year Mm -hmm. or like a real concert that I pay money for, like real Mm -hmm. money for two, three times a year. So when everything else was changing, I adapted really quickly and I didn't miss the live performances that much. But the other day I was listening to the Dear Evan Hansen soundtrack Mm -hmm. and got very sad. Mm -hmm. And it really hadn't happened to me before that. I was just like, when can I do this Mm -hmm. again? And like, when it comes back, how's that going to look? Like, is it going to be like, there's such a rush on Broadway tickets. I'll be priced out for the next, you know, two decades or will Broadway be you know, forever Mm -hmm. markedly changed. And by that, I also mean traveling, Mm -hmm. you know, the traveling shows that people like you and I depend on Mm -hmm. for most Mm -hmm. of our professional theater. It's just, um, in concerts and like which bands are going to keep going and Mm -hmm. like which ones won't. And I don't know. It's it. I think about not just the fact that we don't get to see that those performances, but how are those performers? Mm -hmm. Like what else can you do if you can't perform? You know, this is making me think a lot of the categories you've gone over are going to be gradual returns. They're going to be like there was no school, then there was hybrid school, then they relaxed the mask requirement. And it's not going to be like one day. But there are a few categories where it will it will go from zero to something. And and Broadway, big theater is one of those things. And, And of course, we may have to wait the longest because it is kind of a zero to it's a, you know, maybe they'll reduce capacity in the theater. I guess there are some graduated measures they could take, but, um, Kristen Howerton, our internet friend posted the other day, she lives in orange County. And so she and I were always, uh, going to see the same shows, not like planned. I just would always see her going to the same shows that I was going to at Seagerstrom. And she posted that Seagerstrom has announced a 2021, 2022 season. Now that's the season that starts late in 2021. So like a year from now or late fall. Um, and she just was like, take all my money. Like I I'm there. And so at some point dates are going to be announced and, and maybe some get canceled and maybe we go backward, but there will be a return. It's just, that one's going to feel weird. I think because yes, it's, it's I not agree. something, I, I don't know if I'm making my point, but it's not something with a graduated on ramp, really. Like you're either sitting in a theater. You're watching, either there or you're not <laughs> yeah. right. Exactly. Yeah. And like, you know, places are doing 
places have gotten very um, innovative and they're doing like, you know, they're doing virtual things and they're doing all these different things. It's just, it's not the same. Like watching something on your computer isn't the same. No, 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 it's not. And those intimate moments that you get in a live show or a live, you know, live concert, or live theater performance, um, they really can't be replicated another way. Yeah. And it's that it's it. That's just how it is. Yeah. So like, I, I agree. Like you said, I think some of the, um, I think the summer, even if we're not back to sitting in packed theaters yet, I think the summer will be a very rich time to mm-hmm. do like, you know, outdoor distance kinds and, of yeah. concerts and shows and stuff. And I know some, you know, theaters were already starting to do masked performances and maybe there's a way to like kind of quarantine with your whole cast mm-hmm. because I'm sure I was watching a little, um, pentatonics concert last night and, uh, I was like, oh my gosh, they're standing so close together. And then I thought, well, they probably are together all the time. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. So for that, that is their, that's their family right now. Yeah. And, and there's probably ways to create that in a professional theater group, but that's not something an amateur theater group can right. pull off. Right. You got to go back to work and stuff. Well, so and not to get be interesting. too COVID analytic, anal- analytic-y here, but um, as testing gets better and faster too, even if the pandemic doesn't just whisk away, um, things like that will be more possible. Super rapid tests and, you know, tests that are available anywhere, anytime to make sure that everybody knows kind of like how to be like what their COVID status is and how to be safe. I think we're, this episode is not at all about any of that, but that is all going to be changing as well as all these other things. So I think it'll be interesting. Um, I know we're going to go to break and then come back and kind of talk about our specific hopes to get back to normal and all of that. But as we're talking, I'm thinking this is like such a week, this December 29th space, if you're listening, when this comes out is like this week where we, are kind of still in the, we're still in the holiday mode. The lights are still up and you're feeling kind of reflective, but you're also eager for the year to come. So even though this might feel a touch like of a bummer, I think it's, it's (laughs) worth sitting in this space, I guess. And kind of acknowledging, I totally agree. I'm glad you kind of made, I'm glad you forced us to go through these things that we've either lost or set aside or delayed or hit pause on Because there's all these jokes and memes about like, I just can't wait for 2021. But in reality, like we're in this we're in this middle place. Um, And I think it's important to talk about the things that have changed and to look forward to, like we've said, even the baby steps, the incremental gains and um, advances and and, uh, you know, back to normalcies. So this was this was actually helpful to me, even though it's a bit depressing. (laughs) Well, it is depressing, but I think it's, first of all, we have, we cannot just always put our heads down and forge forward without acknowledging how, what we've done, the, how much work we've done, like Mm -hmm. how much our brains, and there's a meme floating around about, um, I think it's about anxiety or, or being foggy. I think it's about being like, um, it's about trauma response really. And Mm -hmm. it's about like, can't concentrate. Here's why not getting anything done. Here's why. And it's because our our brains have gone into a mode yes. and we've talked about this in previous episodes, but really we have changed everything so quickly. And it really is a testament to like our abilities as humans and moms to do this for our kids. Like mm-hmm. think about the work we've done <laughs> to make this all work for mm-hmm. our, our families. And like, I think you're right. It's worth looking back and acknowledging and just, um, just, just giving ourselves some credit mm-hmm. for what, how hard this has really been, even if we don't always, even if we're kind of cheerful and like optimistic and pushing through, it's all happened. And I also think it gives us a better framework for looking a year from now, which yes. we're going to do after the break and say, what do we want back? Yeah. And how do we want that to look? And like, what are, and we talked a little bit about, you know, in our very, very last few minutes of the last episode, like, what are we really grateful for? And Sarah, one of the things you said was how disruptive this year has been, but how much it's made people especially people who are just really, really comfortable and to, to realize like to never be able to unsee things again. Mm -hmm. Um, whether that is just how fragile so many of the systems that we, that make our lives run are, and maybe how much better they could be shored up. Um, you know, unfairness, injustice, like all of those things that have happened in the last year and like really 
been brought in front of us, we can never unsee them now. So the way we envision, you know, Christmas 2021 going into new year, 2022 Mm -hmm. may not look anything like what we thought we wanted a year ago. And I think that's actually very healthy. I think that's a good thing. Yeah. And, and like you said, such a framework for acknowledging where we are right now so that we can appreciate the incremental gains. I think most of us most of us know it's not going to be a magic wand. You know, the vaccine's not a magic wand and turning a page on the calendar is right. not a magic wand. But I'm hopeful that this gives us the the chance to appreciate those incremental gains, even if they're not the magic bullet, I guess. So, Sarah, when my kids were little, I was always pretty torn on whether to give them a daily multivitamin. I knew that modern kids' diets have some pretty big nutritional gaps, but I also knew that most children's vitamins are basically candy in disguise. They're filled with sugar, they have all kinds of chemicals and preservatives in them, and I was like, why would I give these to my kids? Luckily, two dads recognized the problem and came up with a solution, Haya, the pediatrician-approved, super-powered, chewable vitamin. Haya fills in the most common gaps in modern children's diets to provide the full body nourishment our kids need with a yummy taste they love. Formulated with the help of nutritional experts, Haya is pressed with a blend of 12 organic fruits and veggies, then supercharged with 15 essential vitamins and minerals, including vitamin D, B12, C, zinc, folate, and many others to help support immunity, energy, brain function, mood, concentration, teeth, bones, and more. Your first shipment comes with a cute bottle that has fun stickers your kids can use to decorate it too. My kids always loved that. And we've worked out a special deal with Haya for their best-selling children's vitamin. Receive 50% off your first order. To claim this deal, go to HayaHealth.com slash MomHour. This deal is not available on their regular website. Go to H-I-Y-A-H-E-A-L-T-H.com slash MomHour and get your kids the full body nourishment they need to grow into healthy adults. Nationwide, 100 million people, including 28 million kids, do not live within a 10-minute walk to a park. Let's take it outside. A new podcast series from the Sierra Club will explore the nature all around us and the people working to protect it and ensure access for all. We hope you'll join us. For more information about Let's Take It Outside, visit sierraclub.org slash podcasts. All right, so we've established all that we've lost all that has changed and that some things are going to start to come back to us this year. Um, We thought it would be fun just to kind of go back and forth and name our, our top few things we're looking forward to just that we just are so excited to get back to whenever that happens in the coming year. Um, I can go first (laughs) and this is kind of a silly one, but I am really looking forward to the day when I leave my house to run a few errands and I don't know exactly where I'm going to go or what I'm going to get at each store. And I think, you know, if they don't have that here, I'll just bop around downtown until I find it. Like there is a mental load to errands and outings in this year that, you know, is just taxing after a while. And the The meandering, like lack of a plan may not sound very Sarah-ish, but I am, I am excited to just head out to walk around downtown or to shop for no reason. Um, And that retail experience has been turned into something that requires a calculus that I am looking forward to shedding, if that makes sense. Yeah. I think Sarah, honestly, the biggest theme for like all of the things we're going to talk about, um, or most at least, is that mental calculus piece. So I have completely stopped shopping for pleasure, like almost at all. And that's a bummer for me because we're recording this uh, during the holiday season before Christmas. And I would usually like be doing exactly what you're describing, bopping around downtown. And I I still did go frequent some downtown shops because I want to support them. Mm -hmm. But the shopping experience when I'm hot and wearing a mask and I feel awkward and a nerve, like not Mm -hmm. nervous exactly, but a little weird about being out. Um, it just, it, it strips so much of the joy out of it. And I just, I'm ready for that Mm -hmm. to be over. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not even so much about what I want to add back, but it's like taking that calculus Mm -hmm. away. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so my first, I guess thing I hope will go back to something like normal is just live performance. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I may end up being more selective. I think after this year, 
this last year, we're all going to have different criteria for how we decide if something's worth our time and money. I just think that's changed forever and it's probably never going to come back. But I will, I think that I will continue to prioritize quality live performance. Mm -hmm. And um, I haven't now seen a live performance in so long that I think that will factor heavily Mm -hmm. into my experience post, whatever we decide is post COVID or safe to get back. Like we said, with live performance, it'll probably happen all at once. That's going to be a big one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that. And I'm dying to perform again. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You know, I haven't done it now in so long. So yeah. Yeah. I love that. Um, well for me, uh, and I hope this comes across the right way. I am lucky enough that my kids have been in school in person. And I know for many of you, that's all you're looking forward to. Um, but since I have seen what a COVID, a mid COVID schooling experience looks like with all of the masks and the precautions, and both of our schools are extreme, um, pod or cohort models, and that's allowed them to open. But what it means is that kids don't They don't mix at recess with other classes. They don't do anything as a whole school experience. So any kind of assembly or a field trip or like yada, yada. My middle schooler doesn't change classes like middle schoolers do. They have 14 kids that sit in a room and they do have teachers who come to them, which even that I know I'm lucky for. Um, But I truly I fantasize kind of about the day we get an email from the school saying, you know, after careful review of the data and recommendations from county health, we have decided that whatever, fill in the blank. I'm literally getting goosebumps as I talk about it, because how many emails have we gotten from the schools with bad news? Right. I am so excited for the gradual lifting of these restrictions, whether that means that we go from hybrid, you know, maybe for you, it's from hybrid to full time or maybe it means that masks are only. We only do masks when we're in the auditorium together, but right. for regular yeah. classroom activities, we don't need masks. And, and I know these things will drip out. And, um, I know that, you know, it's been great to be able to achieve school in the middle of this pandemic, but man, I am looking forward to renormalizing school structure, the way we know school to be. And it's going to take a while, but I know it's, I know it will come and, I just will feel so grateful. And I'm so grateful to all the teachers who have made it work. I'm like seriously getting emotional right now. Like yeah, no, it's, it's, it's yeah. so crappy the way it's had to play out both on Zoom or on campus and the face shields and the cleaning. And it's like, I just, I just can't wait. I cannot wait yeah. for that. Those things to be lifted from our kids and our teachers. Um, I just want to acknowledge that I have cried several times already during this episode oh, and not always. You're sneaky. Not- I know I'm a sneaky crier, but not (laughs) always like out of sadness, but just like acknowledging just I'm proud of people. I really am. It just makes me. okay. so now I'm going to be like a sneaky because I'm talking about it. I usually just cry when you're talking. Um, But like it's just it's big. We should just like acknowledge like how many things are so different. And it doesn't um, doesn't mean I'm walking around sad all the time, like, you know, mourning and like like sorry for myself. It's just like, wow. Yeah. Like our kids and the teachers, like you're yeah. so right. Wow. Um, yeah. And I'm looking forward to that too. And I actually think it's kind of, I've made like a little joke out of it, but our superintendent sends out like COVID updates uh-huh. um, whenever there's new cases, but our school has not been in person now in, <laughs> I mean, five or six weeks. So we get a letter like every other day saying like, um, you know, two students at St. Joseph high school have been tested positive for COVID at this time, it is not likely that the case originated inside the school. I'm like, well, I would hope so. Oh my gosh. It's been like over a month. Oh my I mean, gosh. I hope yeah. that like kids aren't sneaking into the school to give each other COVID at That's this point. So, so it just, it's kind of like a joke. Like, yes, I'm ready for there to be like the news to be good yeah. and for there to be progress in the right direction. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah. So here's what I wrote in our, in our outline. It is gatherings, unrestricted, unfettered unencumbered, unencumbered, not encumbered, (laughs) unencumbered. I needs my peoples. And what I think is so interesting about this is as an extrovert who has introverted tendencies, and I believe that is a very ENFP Uh if you're into Myers-Briggs thing. um, What I have found is I don't need most of my people most of the time. Most of the time, I only need like a handful of my people. Mm -hmm. But what I miss is talking to strangers or semi-strangers or turning strangers into friends. Like I love that stuff. And I haven't done that 
since I went to a conference like last uh, Podfest, right? It was like right oh, before COVID. Yeah. So it was like early, early March, like maybe March 2nd or something. Mm-hmm. Um, that was the last time I talked to strangers. Yeah. And like made friends with them, you know, or like people who were kind of strangers, mm-hmm. but who were like, you know, like, like networking kinds yep. of things. Um, I did go to one block party over the summer and it was bizarre. I was, first of all, not used to being around people. And I was like, well, there's so many people. This is, and it really wasn't, it was probably like 15 people and everyone was standing like 10 feet away from each other outside. But I was weirded out by the whole thing. Cause I felt like my skills at doing that had already started to get really rusty. Mm-hmm. And that was in August. So now we're six or seven months past that. Yeah. And I feel like my ability to go into a crowded environment with like lots of people I know and don't know to varying degrees and to like work that crowd has been severely dampened. Mm -hmm. And I really want it. Like Mm -hmm. I didn't realize how much I wanted it, but I want it. I want it pretty bad. Yeah. I get a lot of energy from that. Yeah. No, I mean, as someone who's been with you when you get to be in that mode, I can just you are hardwired to do that. And some people are and some people are super not. And then some people are more neutral. And I don't. I don't um, hate a cocktail party or hate a gathering like that where I have to talk to strangers. I'm I'm actually quite I'm more of an extroverted introvert. Like I'm a natural introvert, but I don't mind things like that. Yeah. But I don't I wouldn't say they give me life like they give you life. And you are really, yeah. really good at that. And I, I tend to pair up with people who are because it's, then it's more fun for me. Right. Like you'll warm up the crowd and I can you know, I can have fun chatting too. So I miss doing that with you. Actually. But then at the end of the night, I get to go turn to you and say, we leave and then we yeah. do. And then I still have you. That's, yeah. the, that's the beauty of a relationship like yeah. that, because then I get to go have my best, my bestie with yeah. me. Right. So it's like, those are like the best things about those kinds of relationships. And it's why sometimes like we've talked about, you don't always notice the thing you miss right away. Mm-hmm. If you still have other elements of your life that are sure. keeping you supported, like my good friends never went away and I still have people I talk to. But then every now and then I'm like, why does just things just feel a little stale? You want the strangers. You you want yeah, you want I the extra strangers in my life. Strangers. It's funny when yeah. you were talking about um, the casual plan making. I've lost track of any when when that was, but I was realizing that we I have that need filled because we moved five minutes away from my parents. So I do still get the like the little excitement of my mom texting and be like, hey, do you want me to pick up the kids and come over for a cup of coffee after school? Like that's why we uprooted our life to do this during COVID for that. So it's funny, I'm not missing that as much, but it's just with a, an itty bitty tiny circle. Um, right. So yeah, that's interesting. Um, okay, so my is it my turn to talk about what I yeah. can't wait? I can't yes. wait for house guests. I uh-huh. love having house guests. I love um, making like making my home comfortable for somebody. And our new home just has a way better setup to have somebody come stay. And that just feels like really fun far away. And I, I don't think I ever shared this on the podcast. I shared it with you, Megan, but over in the fall, when things were pretty stable here in California, we um, twice figured out a way to have somebody stay overnight in our rec room, our bonus room that has a separate entrance. It has its own bathroom. It has a pullout couch. And I just cleaned the whole thing like crazy and aired it out. And then we, we only saw our guest outside in our backyard and then they'd go in this separate entrance for the night. Now this, it would not have been, um, you couldn't do this for a week because the bathroom in there right. doesn't have a shower. It's just a half bath. And like, it doesn't make sense to only hang out with your guests on the patio for more than a day, but it worked for a night. And we did it twice, once with a friend who was traveling through and another with an Orange County friend. And I, I was like never happier than when I was just getting the blankets ready. And like, I just, I missed that. And the, the thought that we now could have all of our Orange County friends come up, we have, excuse me. We have like people come in, um, you know, from out of town, my mother-in-law, I'm just excited. And, and I hope I'm hopeful that if we can figure out the travel, like the, the air travel safely and the testing safely, I'm hoping that this may come back sooner than some other things, maybe sooner than live yeah. performances or large crowds. Cause it really only requires that you, that you feel safe about combining households with one other household. Um, but we haven't done that yet. And I, I'm so excited. I love having house guests. I, I love having house guests and that's been one of those things too, that I forgot how long it's been Yeah, <laughs> since I've done it. And it's really coming into the holidays where you really feel it. You're like, ah, yeah. oh, remember how I used to do this? Yeah. And like, there'd just be people in my house and mm-hmm. oh my gosh. Yeah. So my last one on this list is travel. I know you're going to agree with me. You're yeah. nodding and co-signing. Yep. Um, 
I would just like to travel, please. And I've done like a couple road trips. So I did go up north and did like an outdoor camping experience with my brothers and sister and their families over the summer. Um, and we were really able to do that, you know, to everyone's comfort level. Like I felt really good about the way we were able to do that. It was basically all outside. Every family had their own living quarters. It was a lot of like hanging out around the campfire at night and hikes during mm -hmm. the day and, you know, in kind of a remote area of Michigan. But I'm not going to be able to do that, something like that again for a while. Yeah. So I would really just like to be able to get on a plane mm -hmm. and, and go to someplace that and go to someplace where there's something on the other end for me. So how about we combine your desire to travel with my desire to have you as a house guest? And as long as we can figure out. Yes, I like that. Right. Like if we can figure out like yeah. basic testing and basic like low community spread in our two communities. Oh, my gosh. I feel like our listeners will throw a party for us. What will we do? I we'll do so. When we do it, we'll just be like, here we are. Oh and I'll probably gosh. cry the whole time. Oh I know. my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. hopefully that's, that's soon. Maybe that's sooner than some of these other things than, you know, giant, yeah. giant crowd gathering. I agree. Yeah. Probably that before I get to go see a Broadway show and right. that's okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So now let's move into like the things that we maybe think never really will go back to the way they were either at all mm -hmm. or just for us individually. And th that we're okay with, like yeah. the ones that we think life will not go back to pre-COVID, but we're really all right with it. And Sarah, you go first on this one. Okay. Um, I'm actually changing one of mine in real time because I thought of it. Um, and I'll do this one first, but this I think will never go back to the way it was. And that's a good thing. And that is old people understanding how Zoom and FaceTime work. And by old people, I'm just kind of tongue in cheek, like ev everybody like, <laughs> Me? you know, 60 and older. And well, you well, yeah, you had you and I had to get behind video calls. And of course, to be clear, I'm not saying I want to have birthday parties and actual social gatherings on Zoom. I want that to go away forever. But one thing I have thought about is my my older relatives know how to hop on a Zoom. We did Zoom gingerbread making and Zoom Thanksgiving recipes together. My 91 year old grandma has been I mean, she hasn't done it by herself. She's had help, but like she's been able to see all her grandchildren and great grandchildren on one screen. And it like blew her mind. And we get to keep those skills. We get to keep like the knowledge that it's possible to you know, um, have like faraway grandparents, you know, watch a piano recital or something in, in like through video stream. There's just so many possibilities. Um, I think even teachers and schools have realized like you could zoom in a guest speaker because we have the technology now we know how to do that. So I'm kind of excited that we, we solved all this, um, remote communication when we had to, and we get to keep the parts that will serve us going forward. I totally agree. And I just think it's, it's made me get over myself in some interesting ways. And I'm sure, um, I'm sure people from a, even an older generation than us, like had to get over some other barriers and other hurdles. So I think that's a really good one. And just to add one more thing to that, to think about the ways we can use that in the future that aren't because of COVID, but just because they're better. We did our virtual retreat in November and there were a hundred moms who set aside time for a virtual retreat and we talked about in one of our group sessions that like, OK, we did a virtual retreat because of COVID. But actually, if you and I had had a live event, we couldn't have had all those people from all those different. They're not going to fly across the country to see us and leave their babies and right. all that. The, the virtual part made it possible for moms of nursing babies, moms who couldn't leave their house but wanted to do it from their bedroom. So there's all kinds of things I think we get to keep about that kind of stuff. And then we just we add back in the real life conferences and the real life gatherings and all of that. So, yeah, totally agreed. And if you think about that as well, the other thing that allowed us to do was to interact like, um, individually mm -hmm. with way more people because in a room full of a hundred people, we wouldn't have been able to walk around and like, right. look everyone in the face. Like that's the other thing that was different. Like we were able to see everybody. And if someone talked, we could see them and say, Oh, hi to that person by name. And, and that is different. And that was cool. Um, all right. So my first thing that I would say is maybe never going to go back to the way it was. And that's OK. And that's just I live in a very tourist forward economy. Um, and honestly, it's been booming for the last probably 10 years. I mean, even after the housing crash of, tw of 2008, it came back pretty quick around here, like by 2010 or 11. It was really getting back to where uh, because especially because we live 90 minutes or so from Chicago and it's in every way less expensive to come spend a weekend here than it would be to go there. So like 
our economy bounced back pretty quickly. We just didn't have the same, quite the same crash as a lot of places did. Mm -hmm. But what that kind of led to was sort of like, I don't like a little bit of a laziness in the tourism economy. And it sounds like really like arrogant for me to say, and I'm not someone in food service, but I know the difference between a place where everyone's trying really hard and a place where they just expect tourists to show up and spend their money. And then what ends up happening is an economy like this that trickles down to locals. Like you can't Mm -hmm. help but pay the price because other people are happy to come Mm -hmm. pay the price. Right. And I think I just spent too much money and I spent too much money on experiences that honestly weren't that great. I just, I don't know. Now I feel like my bar has, has raised a lot because I can tell even in the way some of the restaurants around here and breweries and wineries and everything have, have dealt with COVID and how above and beyond they've been in everything, like from creating a new customer experience to making sure it's safe, like all of those things, some have done really, really, really well. And I want to support those businesses a lot. Yeah. And the ones that really have just kind of like not tried that hard or phoned it in, I just have no desire to go there anymore. I, I feel like mm-hmm. it's, it's basically taken my list of places I would go based on um, where everybody else was or where I thought I could get like a good drink special or whatever. It's really changed the way I think about that. And I don't think that's coming back. And I think that that I don't think it's going to go back. And I think that's probably a good thing. I think competition is good for businesses mm-hmm. like that. and. Um, and I hope the ones that are, are really working hard, really do well and thrive. And I think they will, Yeah, because I think those are the ones that have the most, um, loyalty now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually my next one is actually related to that, but instead of restaurants and bars and tourism, it's shopping in general. And that is that 2020 totally changed many of our shopping habits. Um, it was hard to get certain things you had to, you know, pick and choose your retailers. And then layered on top of that was an awareness of wanting to support small businesses, support local businesses, support minority owned businesses, and, and this kind of like conscious shopping that we talked about a few episodes ago. So I don't think my shopping habits will ever go back to the way they were. And I'm not saying that that's true for everyone. Cause I think, I think we will get back to a regular shopping world where you can go to target or you can hop on Amazon and you can, you could go back to normal if you wanted to. I just don't think I will. I think, um, I've trained myself to think differently about where I shop both online and in store for the better. And I, I don't see that going all the way back because I think I got over the hurdle, the hurdle being like getting, you know, getting out of your normal routines or maybe waiting a little bit longer for something to arrive or, or maybe, maybe trying a few different CSA boxes because you know, you have to, there's some trial and error to it or whatever it is. I got over those mental hurdles. So I don't see myself going back for the better. So it's kind of, it's almost like the, um, an equivalent one to what you talked about with, with, um, eating establishments, but mine's more consumer shopping. Yeah. I, I love that. And isn't it just show you that we can all make changes if we just get out of a habit, like we can, Mm -hmm. those, the habit is really what keeps us doing whatever the thing is that we're doing. And, Mm -hmm. and once that's forced to change, it really does make a big difference. Um, all right, well, I think we have time for one more. And so my last thing that I think probably won't go back to the way it was. And that's okay. And I know I talked before about how I really want my people, but on the flip side, like on the other side of that same coin, I don't want to go back to too many social obligations. So for me, the difference between just showing up someplace and randomly running into lots of people that would be fun to talk to is totally, Mm -hmm. totally different from the feeling that I need to, um, keep up with all those people and maintain relationships Mm -hmm. with all those people. And one thing that I've kind of loved in the last 10 months or so is that nobody really seems to have social obligations at all. Like no one expects anything Mm -hmm. of me, including responding to text. And maybe that's just my perception of what people expect of me. But I just feel like everybody kind of like when you respond late to a text now, everyone's like, oh yeah, no, I know how it is. Or when you see somebody and you can't approach them and you're like yelling from 10 feet away and you're trying to have a conversation, but you know that you can't, it's like all of our social obligations have been dropped in a way. And that feels good because it actually allows me to focus in socially on my inner circle, which is really the people that we should be nurturing anyway. Like those are the relationships Mm -hmm. we should be spending the most time and effort on. And then the rest of them become kind of peripheral and you get to them when you can. And that's really Mm -hmm. kind of 
how things should be prioritized. But like, that's mm-hmm. not what happens in a world where you see all these people on Facebook and think, oh, I should get together with that person. It's been a while, mm-hmm. da, da, da. If that is taken off the, you know, like possibility list and you can't do it, you don't think about it that way anymore. So right. that's, I think that's actually given me a lot of breathing room in my life and, and I need that. And sometimes I don't create yeah. it for myself. So, yeah. I love that. Well, I think it's time to wrap up. I'm so curious what our listeners would say to these questions. So things yes. that you just can't wait to return to normal or things that have changed for the good and that's okay. Like things that you might consider keeping as we look to 2021. Before we wrap, I want to briefly mention that we do have our very first Voices interview episode of 2021 on Friday, which is January 1st. I know this is the week where we don't know what day it is. And we toyed with the idea of pushing Voices back to the second Friday of the month, but it's an episode about planning and goal setting and yearly reviews in a much more like tactical, practical way than you and I have have been doing here, Megan. And it's with Sarah Hart Unger, who I spoke to last year. Um, And she is a planner and planning whiz. But we do talk very frankly about the challenge of planning a year like 2021. So I think it'll be a great compliment to this episode, Megan, that we've just done, um, but also really inspiring for the new year, inspiring with a dose of reality for 2021. So Sarah has great tips. Um, And that'll be out on Friday. So listen to that. And yeah, I guess just happy new year, everyone. We will uh, see you on the other side of this crazy 2020 year. Yep. By the time we talk, it will be the much anticipated 2021. (laughs) And we will talk to you then. Hey everyone, Sarah here. Megan and I would absolutely love it if you hit pause right now, right where you're listening and left the mom hour a rating and review. If our show has helped you feel a little more confident as a mom or a little less alone, that's one of the absolute biggest ways you can thank us. And it really takes about 30 seconds. If you're listening in Apple Podcasts, just navigate to the Mom Hours show listing. So not the episode you're listening to right now, but the kind of landing area for our show as a whole. And then scroll down to leave a rating or review. Thank you so much. The Mom Hour is brought to you by partners like The Essential Calendar. The Essential Calendar makes beautiful, minimalist, poster-sized calendars that show an entire season at a glance so you can see and plan for the big picture. If you're looking ahead to 2024 and have big plans you want to see all in one place, visit theessentialcalendar.com slash themomhour. You'll save 10% off your purchase when you visit that link or use code themomhour at checkout. Again, that's 10% off our favorite seasonal calendars at theessentialcalendar.com slash themomhour.